Hey everyone, welcome back. There's been a lot of SLS items in the Artemis news feed for the past couple of weeks, and that's continuing again this week. The SLS core stage for Artemis 2 is now parked in the transfer aisle of the Vehicle Assembly Building at the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. I'll go through some of the news reporting from media in attendance at that event. That includes an extended forecast for the schedule for Artemis 2 launch preparations for the rest of this year and into early 2025. I was also able to get a couple of quick updates on the assembly and test of Orion spacecraft for Artemis 2 and 3, but then there was also a new development in the big picture for SLS. So even as launch preparations are getting closer and getting more real, the uncertainties about the future and the big picture are still in the background kind of photobombing current events. The big news of the week is that SLS and core stage prime contractor Boeing handed over the Artemis II element to Exploration Ground Systems for launch processing. Core Stage 2 was delivered to the Kennedy Space Center this week and is now parked in the transfer aisle of the Vehicle Assembly Building. The stage was rolled out of its Michoud Assembly Facility factory in New Orleans on July 16th and onto NASA's Pegasus Barge. The barge was towed by tugboats from New Orleans to KSC over the next week or so, leaving New Orleans on the morning of July 17th and arriving at Port Canaveral in the late afternoon on July 22nd. The next morning, two tugs maneuvered the barge up the Banana River to the KSC Turn Basin where Pegasus was docked. The afternoon and evening was spent disconnecting and offloading purge equipment and other support hardware and getting the self-propelled modular transporters or SPMTs ready to roll the carriers holding the stage off the barge. On July 24th, that offload of the stage from Pegasus and rollover to the VAB transfer aisle was conducted in the mid to late morning hours. The stage was first backed off the barge, which had to be kept level with the dock as the load of the approximately 100 ton stage and support equipment was shifted off of the floating barge. The multi-purpose transportation system was then swung around in a kind of three-point turn. It was around this time that a summer shower passed over the area and washed down the stage and the move team. The move continued with the stage being towed out of the KSC Press Area Access Road called Transporter Road, across Saturn Causeway, and into the southern low bay end of the VAB transfer aisle. At 212 feet, or a little under 65 meters long, the stage takes up a good deal of the transfer aisle, and the forward end of the stage ends up in front of the high bay 1 and high bay 2 cells. In fact, this was the first sneak peek at some of the tooling that Boeing is setting up in high bay 2 for the final assembly of future core stages, beginning with the next one. We can see some of that blue Futuramic built tooling, at least to some extent. The SPMTs position the carriers holding the stage over skid beams and then set the carriers down on them. That's likely where the stage will be for the next couple of months. EGS and the launch processing contractor team led by prime contractor Jacobs will take a few weeks to do some installation work in the systems tunnel of the stage. We can see that in this horizontal orientation with the stage clock this way, the system tunnel is at ground level. The team will install components of the flight termination system, including linear shaped charges and FCDC lines in the systems tunnel. FCDC stands for flexible confined detonating cord. During this time, NASA and Boeing may also opt to do some additional work on the exterior thermal protection system of the stage.
Delivery of the core stage is a major milestone in preparations for an SLS launch, in this case Artemis 2. And as with the first delivery, the milestone was marked with media events. News reporting from interviews with NASA, SLS, and EGS officials provided a little bit clearer picture of at least the forecasted upcoming schedule. EGS program manager Sean Quinn said in an interview with Spaceflight Now that the plan is for Mobile Launcher 1 to roll back from Pad 39B to High Bay 3 of the VAB around the end of August. High Bay 3 is the one SLS integration cell in the building, although two others are used for support and production. Mr. Quinn also said that stacking of the SLS solid rocket boosters would begin in the fall, with the mate of the core stage to the boosters by the end of the fall, early winter time frame. A story written by Stephen Clark for Ars Technica and published on July 25th also quoted Artemis II mission manager Matt Ramsey projecting a tanking test out in the late winter, early spring time frame next year, so around the end of the first quarter of 2025. I'll include links to that reporting in the description. We'll still have to wait and see when each of these milestones occur. That's why there are watch items. Perhaps before the mobile launcher rolls back from the pad to the VAB, we might get an announcement about decisions by NASA on forward options for the Orion heat shield after the investigation into the behavior scene during the Artemis 1 reentry on December 11, 2022. After a long investigation into the root cause and possible corrective actions, an independent review team took a look at all that work. The news reporting above also noted that independent review team, headed by Paul Hill, was currently briefing the Orion program and was going to brief NASA upper management this coming week. At that point, NASA management will go through their decision-making process, and after that we would expect to hear what they have decided not only for Artemis 2, but also for Artemis 3, 4, and beyond. So maybe that decision and announcement happens in August. As noted, Moon to Mars program head Amit Shatria told me in New Orleans last week that an Artemis 2 stacking checkpoint meeting was planned for around mid-September. It's likely that this Orion heat shield investigation and decisions about options would be one of the inputs for that meeting. One update on the Orion assembly and test status for Artemis II, NASA KSC Public Affairs confirmed that vacuum testing of the spacecraft in the altitude chamber inside the Neil Armstrong Operations and Checkout Building was complete, and also noted that the spacecraft was moved from the chamber back to the final assembly and systems test, or FAST cell, in the industrial operations zone of the ONC building. So, with those updates, here's another look at the Artemis II status and watch items. Aside from a few items like the flight termination installs I noted earlier, the SLS boosters and core stage are more or less waiting for stacking in the VAB, or literally right around the corner. The rest of the launch vehicle just needs to be moved into place. When there's a working schedule for stacking and at the right time in that sequence, ICPS will be moved from the Delta Operations Center to the Multi-Payload Processing Facility, or MPPF. The SLS second stage uses hydrazine for its attitude control system, and those bottles need to be filled before it is ready to be stacked. That wet life for the hydrazine in the ACS tanks is one of those limited operating life items, so that hazardous operation won't be performed in the MPPF until the core stage mate to the boosters is either imminent, in work, or maybe even afterwards. But that needs to happen much closer to when the core stage mate to the boosters occurs and the launch vehicle stage adapter will need to be stacked in between. That's still at Marshall in Huntsville, so that transportation would also need to happen by the end of the year. Before any of that, in maybe the next month or so, but definitely between now and the Labor Day holiday here in the U.S. in early September, we'll be watching for updates on the status of Orion and the location of Mobile Launcher 1. A couple of other news and notes items from the week. I checked with public affairs for the Orion program, and the delivery of the Artemis III European Service Module, ESM-3, is now planned for the end of the summer. PAO said that a more specific date will be picked after a pre-ship review in the coming weeks. Also, the day after the Artemis II core stage was offloaded from the Pegasus barge, the barge departed Kennedy Space Center. 
This is notable because there are multiple hardware elements for SLS stages that need a ride on the barge. Boeing had planned to ship the boat tail for Core Stage 3 and the engine section structure for Core Stage 4 from Michoud to KSC early this year, but that was delayed by the Artemis 2 and Artemis 3 launch date delays. And as noted above, the launch vehicle stage adapter, or LVSA, for Artemis 2 needs to be on hand at KSC at some point before the Core Stage is mated to the boosters. To stack the launch vehicle, first the boosters will be built up then the core stage mated to them. Then the LVSA would be stacked on top of that, followed by the ICPS. So, in terms of Pegasus deliveries, the question is which shipment would be next. For what it's worth, when we were in the engine section production area at Michoud last week, the core stage 3 boat tail looked like it was ready to ship, but the engine section for core stage 4 did not. The reason the latter didn't look ready to ship was because it looked like Boeing was busy working on build jobs. So I guess we'll see when Pegasus returns to KSC what SLS hardware rolls off the barge. Then there's a noteworthy big picture development with SLS coming out of Washington, D.C. In a coincidence, as the second SLS core stage arrives at its launch site for the first crewed lunar mission since 1972, the other appropriations bill that covers the NASA budget was marked up on Thursday, July 25th and in it is a new watch item for the long-term future of SLS. The Senate Appropriations Committee finished crafting their bill for commerce, justice, science, and related agencies for fiscal year 2025. It takes less time to say the CGAS bill, and the accompanying report refers back to the NASA Inspector General's report on commercialization plans for SLS. Report IG24001 was released on October 12th of last year, and it's something I've gone over parts of in past videos. However, one of the things that wasn't made a formal recommendation in the report was this part near the end. The OIG report says in part, quote, In our judgment, the agency should continue to monitor the commercial development of heavy lift spaceflight systems and begin discussions of whether it makes financial and strategic sense to consider these options as a part of the agency's longer term plans. Unquote. It's hard to imagine that retired Senator Richard Shelby, who is a longtime ranking member of appropriations, would have run with this even a little bit. But Senator Gene Shaheen, the ranking Democrat on the CGS subcommittee, and its current chair did. In the late May subcommittee hearing on the NASA and National Science Foundation parts of the CGS bill, Senator Shaheen made a point of asking about commercial launch services in that hearing. And as you're looking at Artemis 5 and beyond, has NASA considered thinking about commercially competing those launch services as well, given the success that you've had to date? They are already uh, competed. As a matter of fact, the schedule that is going on, Artemis III is the first landing, that's SpaceX. Her former colleague, NASA Administrator Bill Nelson, responded about commercial procurements in general, such as for crewed lunar landing services. But the CJS report released again makes it clear that some senior senators are asking about launch costs within the Exploration Directorate, which is saying SLS, but not by name. The OIG report said in their judgment, the current commercialization strategy for SLS will, quote, fall short of anticipated cost savings, unquote. In this appropriations bill, the report language directs NASA to provide Congress with an update on the current SLS commercialization strategy, but also, quote, an analysis of how commercial launch options could be part of the agency's long-term strategy, unquote. So it's clearly something rather than nothing, and it's noteworthy. But it's also possible that nothing comes of this study request. The bill is just a bill, and this language may not become law. Even if it does, anything can be studied for little cost other than someone's time. We're already waiting to get an update on the commercial SLS contract negotiations called the Exploration Production and Operations Contract, or EPOC, and the Senate bill also asks for a formal update on those EPOC plans. 
Now, what we'll also want to watch is whether the changing makeup of the representatives and senators in Congress will also fundamentally change the political dynamics for heritage-based programs like SLS. And it's another storyline to come back to in future news updates. Thanks for watching. Click on the like button if you found this video informative. It does seem like Artemis 2 launch preparations are starting to get close, but we're still waiting for decisions on Orion plans, and with this new development in Congress, there's something else to watch for the rest of this year.